mummy says, I'm a miracle. My daddy says, I'm a special little guy. I am a princess. I am a prince. Moses, I'm an angel sent up from the sky. My daddy says, I'm a special little soldier. No one is as handsome, strong as me. It's true, he indulges my tendency to bulge. But I'm his little soldier, up to for free. My mommy says, what a miracle. One look at my face and it's plain to see. Ever since the day, Doc Chong, the umbilical cord. It's a clear little fear for a miracle like me. My daddy says, I'm a special little soldier. No one is as bold or as tough as me. I can be a soldier and shoot you in the face. Days. Specialness is there a above average is average. Go figure. Is it some modern miracle of calculus that such frequent smear goals don't render each one a miraculous? My mommy says I'm a miracle. Once I get my face, then it's plain to see. Ever since the day, Doc chopped the umbilical cord. It's been clear there's no fear for a miracle like me. Another picture of our angel from this angel over here. She is clearly more emotionally developed than a kid. What is yeah? You who hug me like a mommy, don't put honey on your brother. Small for mommy, small for mother. I think she blinked. Let's take another. Have you seen a school report? You gotta see on his report. Why we have to change the school? The teacher's clearly falling short. She's so delightful, so hilarious and insightful. But she be a little brighter than a class. Oh yeah, she's definitely advanced. Take another. My mommy says I'm a miracle. One look at my face and it's plain to see. Ever since the day Don chopped the umbilical cord, it's been clear there's a fear for a miracle like me. My mommy says I'm a miracle. My hand is tiny and as shiny as a miracle. You can be all cynical, but it's the truth that miracles have never been a miracle. A miracle, a miracle. Look, is this gonna take much longer, Doctor? I've got a plane to catch at three. I'm competing in the biannual international amateur style so ballroom dancing championships in Paris. Of course I am. I always compete, Doctor. And this year, I have a secret weapon, Rudolph Elm. He's part Italian, you know. Very supple. Has incredible upper body strength. I think we need to have a talk. So, what is it? What's wrong with me? Do you really have no idea? When? Miss Wormwood, I want you to think very carefully. What do you think might be the cause of this? Am I? Am I? Look, am I fat? You're pregnant. What? You're gonna have a baby. But I've got a baby. I don't want another one. Isn't that something you can do? Antibiotics or, oh my good lord, what about the biannual international amateur south of our dancing chips? A baby, Miss Woman, a child. The most precious gift the natural world can bestow upon us has been handed to you, a brand new human being, a light, a person, a wonderful new person is about to come into your life to bring love and magic and happiness and wonder. Oh, bloody hell! Every life I bring into this world restores my faith in humankind. Push, Miss Wormwood, push! I'll push you in a minute! Each newborn life a canvas, yet unpainted. This still unbroken skin, this uncorrupted mind. Every life is unbelievably unlikely. The chances of existence Almost infinitely small. The most common thing in life is light. And yet every single life, every new life, is a miracle. Miracle. Where is he? Where is he?
my son. Mr. Wormwood, are you, are you smoking a cigarette? Oh, of course, Doctor. I'm sorry. What was I thinking? This calls for a proper smoke. <laughs> <laughs> my word, he's an ugly little thing. This is one of the most beautiful children I've ever seen. Um, where's his thingy? His what? You know. This child doesn't have a thingy because... A boy with no thingy! Look what you've done, you stupid woman, the boy's defective. Mr. Woman, this child is a girl. A beautiful, beautiful little girl. Is that still time of the bar? Yeah, you were international amateur sausage and bottle. Competitions finished, you missed it. Is there any chance you could exchange it for a boy? This is the worst day of my life. Else <laughs> my the cabbage doesn't feel quite normal. My skin. semi-formal, semi-Spanish gown I should be wearing in the semi-finals tonight. I should be dancing the Tarantella, Piemont Bella, Italiano, not dressed in hospital cotton with an ouchie front bottom and this miracle, horrible, oh, miracle, smelly miracle, little horrible animal I have ever seen. I can't find his franken beef. Every life is unbelievably unlike The chances of existence almost infinitely small. Yes, sir. Are they good runners? Well, let me put it like this. You wouldn't beat them in a race. <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir. They are good runners, sir. Yes, sir. So, um, how much? Harry! Hang on. Look at this. She's reading a book. A book. That's not normal for a five-year-old girl. I think she might be an idiot. Listen to this. It was the best of times, it was the worst of times, it was the age of wisdom. Stop scaring your mother with that book! I'm a girl. Boy. And she keeps on trying to tell me stories, Harry. Stories! I mean, who wants stories? It's not normal for a girl to be all thinking. I'll pull you right back. Can you please stop talking? I'm trying to make the biggest business deal of my life, and I have to listen to this. It's all your fault. You spend us into debt and expect me to get us out of it. What am I, a flaming escapologist? Escapologist, he says. What about me, then? I've got a whole house to look after. Dinners don't microwave themselves, you know. If you're an escapologist, I might be an acrobat to balance that, not the world's greatest acrobat. 
I'm off to bleach my roots, and I shan't be talking to you for the rest of the evening. You poor little man. But, but I'm going to make us rich. Rich? How rich? Very rich. Russian businessmen. Very, very stupid. I'm going to sell them 155 knackered old baggers ass. Brand new luxury cars. But that's not fair. The cars will break down. What about the Russians? Fair? <laughs> Listen to the boy. I'm a girl. Fair doesn't get you anywhere in life, you thick headed slit brain. All I can say is thank heavens Michael inherited his old man's brains. Michael. Hmm. Well, I shall take the money when you earn it, and I shall spend it, but I shall enjoy it because of the despicable way you have spoken to me tonight! This is all your fault. You and your stupid books and your stupid reading. But, but I didn't do anything. That's not right. Right? I'll show you what's right. You're going to go off to school in a few days' time, and you will be getting right there. I know your headmistress, Mrs. Agatha Trunchbull. Great, big, strong, scary woman she is. You sit about her in the Olympics. Imagine what she'll do to us, to a little goblin like you. Boy, now get in there and stay in there, you, you nasty little creep. I'm a girl. Jack and Jill went up the hill to fetch a pail of water. So they say the subsequent fall was inevitable. They never stood a chance, they were written that way. Innocent victims of their story. Like Romeo and Juliet, t'was written in the stars before they even met. That love and fate and the touch of stupidity would rob them of the hope of living happily. The end things are often a little bit gory. I wonder why they didn't just change their story. We're told we have to do what we're told, but surely. Sometimes you have to be a little bit naughty. Just because you find that life's not fair, it doesn't mean that you just have to grin and bear it. If you always take it on the chin and wear it, nothing will change. Even if you're little, you can do a lot. You mustn't let a little thing like little stop you. If you sit around and let them get on top of you, you might as well be saying you think that it's okay and that's not right. And if it's not right, you have to put it right. Platinum blonde hair dye, extra strong, keep out of reach of children. Oil of violet hat tonic for men. Yep. In the sup of a bolt, there's a tiny revolt. The seed of a wool in the creek of a floorboard. The storm can begin with the flap of a wing. The tiniest light path, the mightiest thing every day. Starts with the tick of a clock, all escapes. Starts with the click of a lock. If you're stuck in your story and want to get out, you don't have to cry, you don't have to shout. Cause if you're little, you can do a lot. That little thing like little stop you If you sit around and let them get on top you Won't change a thing Just because you find that life's not fair It doesn't mean that you just have to grin and bear it If you always take it on the chin and wear it You might as well be saying you think that it's okay And that's not right And if it's not right you have to put it right But nobody else is gonna put it right for me Nobody but me is gonna change my story Sometimes you have to be a little bit naughty
the sun, a man's hair is great, as I say. Good hair means good brain. Now, the secret of my success in business is... Secrets. Yes, the secret. The secret of my success in business is this. Oil of violet hair tonic for men. Now, stand back, son, and watch your old man go to work. Ah, oh, yes, that's the stuff. That's the bananas right there. Yes, that's it. Yes, yes. Voila. A man in business simply cannot fail to be noticed when he looks like this. Secrets. Lord, woman, you've started already. It's not even a day. Ah! My hair! It's it's green! What on earth did you do that for? Why do you want green hair? I didn't do that. I didn't want green hair. Maybe you saw my mommy's peroxide by mistake? That's exactly what you did, you stupid man! Well, I, I've got my deal today. The Russians! What am I going to do? I know. I know what you can do. What is it? What can I do? You can pretend you're an elf. Yes! That's it! I'll pretend I'm a... What are you talking about, you fool? The boys are loony! Mom, would you like to hear a story? Don't be disgusting. Go creep on back to that law if you know something. The sooner you're locked up in school, the better. Hi, Miss Phelps. Hi, Matilda. Back at the library again, are we? Oh, yes. Well, my mother wanted me to stay at home with her, of course. She hates it when I go out. She misses me so much. Dad, too. He loves having me around. But I think it's good for grown-ups to have their own space. Oh, Matilda, your parents must be so proud to have a daughter as clever as you. And do you tell them lots of stories like you tell me? Oh, Matilda, I do love your stories. That's not a hint, by the way. But if you did happen to have a story you wanted to share... Oh, sorry. Bye, Miss Phelps. See you next week. Bye, Miss Honey. Good luck with the Tolstoy. As I was saying... If you... <gasps> Who's that lady? Oh, that's your new teacher. That's Miss Honey. That lady? That lady is my... Yes, that lady's your teacher. Now, are you going to tell me a story or not? Once upon a time... Once upon a time, the two greatest circus performers in the entire world, an escapologist who could escape from any book ever invented, and an acrobat who was so skilled in seeing she could actually fly, fell in love, and got married. And they performed some of the most incredible feats anyone had ever seen. And people would come from miles around. Kings, queens, celebrities, and astronauts. But not just to see their skills, but to see their love for each other, which was said to be so deep, cats would purr as they passed and dogs would weep with joy. They moved into a beautiful old house at the edge of town, and in the evenings they would walk and take in the air. And at night, the children of the town would wait in anticipation, hoping for a glimpse of the acrobat's shiny white scarf. For then, they knew they just had to cry tricks tricks and the two performers would instantly oblige with the most spectacular show just for them. But although they loved each other, although they were famous and everyone loved them, they were sad. Everything that the world has to offer, said the wife. We have everything. But we do not have the one thing in the world we want most. But the one thing. We do not have a child. Patience, my love. Patience, my love, replied the husband. Time is on our side. Even time loves us. But time is the one thing that no one is master of. And as time passed, they grew quite old, and still they had no child. And that night, they would listen to the sounds of their big, empty house and imagined how beautiful it would be if it was filled with the sound of a child playing. Matilda, this is very sad. Do you want me to stop? Don't you dare. 
The sadness overwhelmed them and drew them on to ever more dangerous feats, as the world became the only place they could escape the inescapable tragedy of their lives. And so, it was then that they decided they would perform the most dangerous feat ever known to man. It is called, announced the husband to the world press, who gathered to listen with bated breath. The burning woman, howling through the air, with dynamite in her hair, over sharks and spiky objects, caught by the man locked in the cage, and it is the most dangerous feat ever known to man. It is our destiny, replied the wife smiling sadly and lifting a hand of his, it is with the loneliness of our lives have led us. Well, what happened after that? I, I don't know. Not yet, anyway. What? No, please, just, I mean, there must be something. I, well, I guess your mother must be here by now. Is she here, by the way? I'd love to meet her. I'm the cell to see you tomorrow. After your first day of school, I'm his special little guy. I am a princess. And I am a prince. Mom says I'm an angel. Mom says I'm an angel. Mom says I'm an angel. And so you think you're able ah! to survive this mess by being a prince or a princess, you will soon see. There's no escaping tragedy. And even if you put in heaps of effort, you're just wasting energy. Cause your life as you know it is ancient history. I have suffered in this jail. I've been trapped inside this cage for ages, this living hell. But if I try, I can remember back before my life had ended, before my happy days were over. Before I first heard the pealing of the bell My girl was curious So innocent I asked a thousand questions But unless you want to suffer, listen up and I will teach you A thing or two You listen here, my dear, you'll be punished so severely If you step out of line and if you cry, we'll be dumb You should stay out of trouble and remember to be extremely careful Why? 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 Did you hear what he said? Just you wait for Fizz Ed. What's Fizz Ed? Physical education. It's the trench bowl speciality. My mommy says I'm a miracle. My daddy said I will be the teacher's pet. School is really fun, according to my mom. Just to learn the alphabet. The alphabet? You probably learned to listen, kid. Just you wait for me. 
and today is a very special day. Your first day in school. Do any of you know your two times tables? Wonderful. Matilda, isn't it? Please stand up and do as much as you can. One times two is two. Two times two is four. Three times two is six. Four times two is eight. Five times two is 10. Six times two is 12. 7 times 2 is 14, 8 times 2 is 16, 9 times 2 is 18, 10 times 2 is 20, 11 times 2 is 22, 12 times well, 2 is... my word, that's very... 13 times 2 is 26, 14 times 2 is 28, 15 times 2 is 30, 16 times... Stop, stop, good heavens, how far can you go? I don't know, quite a long way, I think. Um, do you think you could tell me what 2 times 28 is? 56. Well, y yes. Um, now this is much harder, so don't worry if you don't get it, but if you took your time, do you think that you could maybe tell me what 2 times 487 is? 974. 12 sevens. 84. Um, let's, let's leave maths for the time being and take a look at reading. Umi, pick me, please, please, please. Nigel? I think we'd better leave it at that, Nigel. We wouldn't want you to burst a blood vessel on your first day. Lavender? Is the first word tomato? Um, no, but tomato is a very good word. Yes! Matilda? I can now read words. So, Matilda, you can read words. Oh, yes. Well, I had to learn to read words so I could read sentences because basically a sentence is just a big bunch of words. And if I can't read sentences, then I've got no chance at books. And have you read a whole book yourself, Matilda? Oh, yes. More than one. Last week I read quite a few. A few? In a week? That's incredible. What are some of the books that you've read? Nicholas Nickleby, Oliver Twist, Jane Eyre, Tessa the Dubervilles, Lord of the Rings, Kim, the Secret Garden, Crime and Punishment, and, and Stick of the Dump. Knock on the door, Jenny. Just knock on the door. Don't be pathetic. Knock on the door, Jenny. There's nothing to fear. You're being pathetic. It's just a door. You've seen one before. Just knock on the door. Look at you trying to hide, silly. Standing outside the principal's office like a little girl. It's just pathetic. Look at you hesitating, handshaking. You should be embarrassed. You're not a little girl. It's just pathetic. Knock on the door, Jenny. What are you waiting for? Just knock on the door. Perhaps I will wait. She's probably having a meeting or something and won't want to be interrupted. If anything, caution in these situations is sensible. One should avoid confrontation where possible. I'll come back later then. But this little girl, this miracle, knock on the door, Jenny. Just knock on the door. Stop being pathetic. Enter. Uh... 
Well, don't just stand like a wet tissue, get on with it. Well, well, yes, head, headmistress, there's, there's in my class um, a little girl, M Matilda Wormwood. Daughter of Mr. Harry Wormwood, who owns Wormwood Motors. Excellent man. Told me to watch out for the brat, though, so she's a real wart. Oh, no, I don't think Matilda's that kind of girl at all. Wart is a school martyr, Miss Honey. Bombi Natum S. Magitum. Bombi Natum S. Magitum. Children are maggots. You know, it wasn't her who put that stink bomb under my desk this morning. I'll have her for that. Thank you for suggesting it. What? But I didn't say that at all. Nonsense. Haven't I just told you she's a gangster? But she knows her times tables. So she's learned a few tricks. But she can read. So can I? I have to tell you, headmistress, that in my opinion, Matilda Wormwood should be placed in top form with the 11-year-olds. What? She's a shrimp, she's a squib, she's an unhatched tadpole. We cannot just place her with the 11-year-olds. What kind of society would that be? What's about the rules, honey? The rules. I believe Matilda Wormwood is an exception to the rules. An exception to the rules? In my school? Look at these trophies, see how my trophies gleam in the sunlight, see how they shine. What do you think it took to become English hammer throwing champion? 1969, do you think in that moment when my big moment came that I treated the rules with casual disdain? Well, like hell. As I stepped into the sacrament, I changed my plan. Hmm? What? As I chopped up my palms, did I wave my hands? I did not! As I started my spin, did I look at the view? Did I drift off and dream for a minute or two? Do you think I faltered or mended my rotation? Do you think I altered my intended elevation? As the hammer took off, did I change my grunt from the grunt I had practiced for many a month? Not a dot, not a dot, did I stray from the plot? Not a detail of my throw was adjusted or forgotten. Not even when the hammer left my hands and sailed higher, half above the stands, did I let myself go? Now, 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 now. If you want to throw the hammer for your country, you have to stay inside the circle all the time. And if you want to make a team, you don't need happiness or self-esteem. You just need to keep your feet inside the line. Sing, children. Two, three, four. If you want to throw the hammer for your country, Just one simple rule to hammer throwing life and school. Life's a ball, so learn to throw it. Find the valley line and tow it. And always keep your feet inside the line. Now get out. Stupid, nasty, stinking, sliming, great big question asking. How dare they speak to me like that? Who do they think they are? Living, flaming, filthy Russians. Oh, don't tell me we're not rich. It's the mileage. They took one look at the mileage on the first car and said, these cars were knackered. I tried to tell them it was a manufacturing mistake. Is that true? Of course it's not true. So you lied? Of course I lied. And they didn't believe you? Of course they didn't believe me. I've got green hair! I've got hair. And what's this? Another flaming book? What's wrong with the telly? She got no respect 
like that one. It's a books and stories. No, no, it's a lovely book. Honest, you should read it. I'm sure you... Lovely? Here's what I think of you, lovely. No, it's a library book. Stop, it's the library. You show that little brat. <laughs> Do we have any super glue? <laughs> it's in the cupboard. And while you're at it, how about you glue your stupid book to your stupid head? <laughs> <laughs> Because you find that life's not fair, it doesn't mean that you just have to grin and bear it. If you always take it on the chin and wear it, nothing will change. Even if you're little, you can do a lot. You mustn't let a little thing like little stop you. If you sit around and let them get on top you, you might as well be saying you think that it's okay and that's not right. I've got my eye on you, boy. Let me go. <laughs> Brains in your head give you a headache? I mean, it's got a hair being all squished in there. No, it's fine. I think they just fit. Right, well, I better stick around just in case it starts pulling out your ears or something. I'm Lavender, by the way, and I think it's best to become best friends. Hide me, hide me. Someone's poured a whole can of treacle onto Trunchbull's chair. She sat down, and when she got up, her knickers stayed stuck to the seat. Someone said, I done it, but I never, and now she's after me. But that's not fair. You're done, kid. You're finished. Once Agatha Trunchbull decides you are guilty, you are squished. Yesterday, she caught Julius Rotwinkler eating a licorice all sort during science class. She just picked him up, swung him around, and threw him out the window. That's not true. That didn't happen. They're just trying to scare us. They're saying she's going to throw me in Chokey. <gasps> what's, what's Chokey? It's a cupboard in her office she throws children into. They say she's lined it with nails, spikes, and bits of broken glass. There's a place you are sent if you haven't been good, and it's made of spikes and wood, and it isn't wide enough to sit. And even if you could, there are nails on the bottom, so you'd wish you'd stood when the hinges creak. And the door is closed. You cannot see squat, not the end of your nose. And when you scream, you don't know if the sound came out or if the scream in your head even reached your mouth. Ah! All right, look, when did this happen? 20 minutes ago, but why? Oh no, she's coming. You better hide, quick, blazes. Oh, Matilda, please don't tell her where now. I am. You! You suffering spleen. Where's the man getting known as Nigel? He's over there under those coats. <laughs> Where he's been for the last hour, actually. What? An hour? Oh, yes. Well, you see, unfortunately, Nigel suffers from the rare but chronic sleep disorder narcolepsy. Mm. The condition is characterized by the sufferer experiencing bouts of chronic fatigue or falling suddenly asleep, often without warning or any knowing at all, really. You see, Nigel fell asleep when we put our coats over him for safety, didn't we? Didn't we? Uh, right. Yes, absolutely. Most definitely. Of course, of course. Snarklepsy. <laughs> He'll probably think he's in bed when he wakes up. Oh, is it time for school yet, Mom? Oh, wait. This is not my bedroom at all. Hello, Miss Trunchbull. Amanda? Three. What have I told you about pigtails? I hate pigtails. My mom, my legs don't. She's a little pretty. 
then your mother is a twit! <laughs> is that child still alive? Matilda. Matilda Wormwood. Well, Wormwood, you just made a big mistake. Just so you know, she's my best friend. <laughs> yes, sir, that's right, sir. 155 brand new luxury cars, sir. Yes, sir, yes, sir, brand new, sir. Yes, sir. Green hair? Well, um, it was National Green Hair Day, a celebration of all things great, green, and wonderful in the world, like lettuce and snow. Yes, sir. So, um, 1 p.m. tomorrow? Yes, sir. Dot to do da. Hmm. Hmm. Well, come on. I'll keep it on. It looks like rain. Matilda's teacher. Bit busy right now. It will only take a moment. Oh well, come in if you must. This is Ruth's author. It's nothing like that. He's my dance partner, Weber Hassing. Ciao. Ah, uh, parle italiano. Bene, come stai, Rudolfo? What? <laughs> Babe, do you know what interruption due to my energy flow? What do you want, Miss Chutney? It's Miss Honey. Well, as you know, Matilda's in the bottom class, and children in the bottom class are only expected to read, and... Then stop her reading, then! Lord knows we've tried. Babes, I'm on fire here. But look, Miss Hussey, I'm not in favour of girls getting all clever pants. Girls should be thinking about makeup and hair dye. Looks are more important than books. Now look at you, and look at me. You chose books. I chose books! But Matilda can calculate complicated figures in her head in an instant. Calculate this. Alphabet, out we go! Her mind is incredible. With a little help from us, she could... Mind? Her mind? You must not know anything, do you? Somewhere along the way, my dear, you've might an awful error. You ought to blame yourself now. Come along. You seem to think that people, like people, are clever. It's very quaint, it's very sweet, but wrong. People don't like smarty pets what go around, claiming that they know stuff we don't know. Now here's a tip, what you know matters less than the volume with which what you don't know is expressed. Content has never been less important. So you have got to be loud. Ah. So you got a little stand up and shake out from the crowd. A little less black, a lot more fear. A little less back, a lot more fear. A little less brave. No one's gonna tell you what to shake your touch well. You gotta like the hiding under a bushel. No one's gonna look if you don't stand out. No one's gonna listen if you don't shout. No one's gonna care if you don't care. So go put some highlights in your hair. Cause you gotta highlight what you got. Even if what you got is not a lot, you gotta be loud. You gotta give yourself permission to shine. That not for me. Growl, growl, growl. A little less, a lot more, a little less, a lot 
more sway, a little less dressing like your mum, a little more ba da ba 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 da ba. I look nice. You don't. No one's gonna tell you what to wear in your bamba. No one's gonna love you if you don't know the rumba. Everybody loves a little something. It's okay. But learning a language is over the top. It doesn't really matter if you don't know now. As long as you don't know with a bit of clout. The less you have to sell, the harder you sell it. The less you have to say, the louder you yell it. Some of the act, the bigger the confession. The less you have to show, the louder you dress it. You gotta get up. You gotta get up and be loud. Jenny. Just get on your feet, Jenny. You are going to march in there and give them a piece of your mind. Leave it alone, Jenny. The more that you try, the more you'll just look like a fool. This is not your problem. You've not got the spine. You are a teacher. Just go back to school. But this She seems not to know that she's special at all. And what sort of teacher would I be if I let this little girl fall? I can see. Instead, she's found me, pathetic little me. And another door closes, and Jenny's outside. And so the great day arrived. It was like the entire world had gathered to watch the burning woman hang into the air with dynamite in her hair over shocked and spiky objects caught by the men locked in the cage. Everything was arranged by the acrobat's sister, a frightening woman who was an Olympic class hammer throwing champion and who loved nothing more than to scare the children of the town. People whispered that in her dark and brooding heart, she resented her sister, both her success and her love. The escapologist came out in his usual spangly costume and tights, but there was no sight of the acrobat, and no glimpse at all of his shiny white scarf. And instead of the usual musical fanfare, there was silence as he solemnly strode out into the center ring. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, the burning woman hurling through the air with dynamite in her hair over oh, sharks, sharks and spiky, spiky objects, objects caught by the man locked in the cage has been cancelled. No! The audience gasped. 
so loud a passing airplane caught it on instrumentation and reported it as an atmospheric phenomenon. Cancelled because my wife is pregnant. pregnant. Oh, Matilda. Absolute silence. You could hear a fly burp. Then, suddenly, the audience jumped to his feet and roared in its appreciation. The great beat was instantly forgotten and the applause went on for nearly an hour. So a happy ending after all. Forgotten by everyone except that is the acrobat sister. When all had quieted down, she stepped forward and produced a contract. A contract? A contract you have signed to perform this feat, and perform this feat you shall. I have paid for the posters, publicity, the catering, the toilet facilities. If I give the crowd their money back, where is my profit? A contract is a contract is a contract. My hands are tied. The burning woman hurling through the air with dynamite in her hair over sharks and spiky objects caught by the man locked in the cage be from this day or after prison you both shall go! Miss, Miss Phelps, are you crying? Maybe I shouldn't tell the rest of the story. No. We must find out how it ends. And I'm not crying because it's sad. I'm crying because it must be so lovely to be loved so much. Yeah. Wonderful. I'll see you tomorrow. Matilda, could I speak to you for a moment? I'm afraid I haven't been too successful in getting others to recognize your abilities. So, I was thinking I could go to the library and get some very challenging books for you to read, and you can sit in the back of the classroom and read them while I teach the others. And if you have any questions at all, I'll try my best to answer them. How does that sound? Matilda, that's the biggest hug anyone's ever given me. You're going to squeeze all the air out. Matilda Wamu, Matilda Wamu, where is Yes, Miss Trunchbull. Ah, oh, so you didn't do you. I meant, what, Miss Trunchbull? This clot, this foul carbuncle, is none other than a criminal, a denizen of the underworld, a member of the mafia. This morning, you sneak like a serpent into the kitchen, so the size of my private chocolate cake from my tea tray. No, I did not. Miss Trunchbull, Matilda's been here all morning. Huh. Stand up for little spitball, are you? Wow! This crunch is before school started, therefore, she is guilty! Okay, look. All right. I stole the cake. And I was definitely, sort of, kind of thinking about owning up. Maybe. But the thing was, I was having a lot of trouble with my belly. You see, the Trunchbull's cake was so good that I had scoffed it down too quick, and now is beginning to fight back. Oh. Oops. You see, I'm not guilty. I didn't do anything. You are guilty because you're a fiend. You are a crook, and I shall crush you. I shall pound you. I shall dissect you, madam. I shall consign you to the seventh circle of hell, child. You shall be. You shall be destroyed! <laughs> it was the biggest burp I had ever done. It was the biggest burp I had ever heard. The biggest burp I had ever heard about. It was like the entire world went silent for that burp to exist. As a huge cloud of chocolatey gas wafted from my mouth and drifted across the classroom, past Alice, past Lavender, past Matilda. And then my great big beautiful chocolatey burp, which now seemed to have a mind of its own, wafted full into the face of the trench ball. Bruce Bob Trotter. Yes, miss? You liked my cake, didn't you, Bruce? Yes, Miss Trunchbull, and, and I'm very sorry, but... Uh... 
So she enjoyed the cake. That's the main thing. <laughs> is it? Yes, Bob Trotter. It is. Oh. Well, I did. Thank you. <laughs> Wonderful. Marvellous. It makes me so happy. It gives me a warm glow in my lower intestine. <laughs> oh. Cork. What's the matter, Bob Trotter? Lost your appetite? Well, well, yes, miss. I'm full. Oh, no, you're not. I shall tell you when you are full. And I see that criminals like you are not haunting even the entire cake. But... No buts. You haven't got time for but. Eat. But I can't eat at all. You should have thought of that worrying about it was being working being a pack with Satan and decided to steal my cake. Eat. He can't. Eat. Surely can't. Eat. Eat. A single slice. Or even two, Bruce. Might have been nice. But even you, Bruce, got to admit, between you and it, there's not a lot of difference in size. He can't. He can't. He surely can't. He surely can't. He won the man, Bruce. He might explode. He's quite elastic. He's going to blow. Make him stop. He's fantastic. Look at him go. I can't watch. I think it affects. This must confirm, Bruce. But we are suspected. You have a word, Bruce. Or maybe a largeness. It's like a TARDIS. Considerably roomier in size. He can't. He can't. He surely can't. He surely can't. He won the man, Bruce. B-R-O-O-C. You'll never again be subject to abuse For your immense caboose So go with Bruce, Bruce Was everybody you were tightening the noose? We never thought it was possible But here it is coming true We can have our cake and eat it too Bruce, go. Time has come to put that tumbly tongue to use No excuse, Bruce Let out your belt, I think you want your trousers loose Oh, stop it in, Bruce! You're almost finished, Bruce! Whatever you do, don't, don't give, give in. in. Don't let her win. Come on, Bruce, be our hero. Cover yourself in chocolate glory. It's too much. It's just too much. Come on, Bruce, do it. Silence! to mention. That was the first part of your punishment. There's more. A second part. And that part is choking! <laughs> no, Miss Trunchbull, please, you can't! Yes, Miss Trunchbull, please, you can't! Do you think I'd allow myself to be fooled by these nuggets? Hmm? Who do you think I am? An idiot? A fool? A weakling? You? But he ate the entire thing. He did what you asked. Come along, Bob Trotter! <laughs> That's not right!
<sighs> I would like to offer an apology for some of the things that have been going on here tonight. There are not nice things and there are not right things. And I'd like to state guarantorically that we do not want any children that might be here tonight watching this to go home and try these things out for themselves. I am of course talking about reading books. Yeah. It is normal for kids to behave in this fashion. It sets the brain, wears out the eyes, makes kids ugly, stinky, fatty, sweaty, betty, boring, gaseous, and crucially, it gives them varicus of the mind. Under no circumstances do we condone such activities, and we do so utterly without reservoirs. Can I just ask, how many people here have ever read a book? Please raise your hands. <laughs> you, sir, in the great title. <laughs> You look like it's your birthday. Well, what is your name? Lester. Well, Mr. Lester, please do not take this the wrong way, but you're a swan and a bookworm. Worms read books, you read books. Worms are stupid, you are stupid. You're a swan. Now, Mr. Lester will learn from that. He won't learn to stop reading books, but he will learn to never raise his hand in the theater again. <laughs> and now, it is my pleasure to present the pinnacle of our achievements as a species, the very reason we bought the evolving from unicorns in the first place. Somewhere, on a show I heard, a picture tells a thousand words. So, tell you, if you're born to look, it's equivalent to, like lots of books. All I know I learned from telly, this big beautiful box of facts. If you know a thing already, maybe you can see the channel of it just like that. Endless joy and endless laughter. Folks living happily ever after. All you need to make you wise is 23 minutes plus advertisements. Why would we waste the energy trying to work out Ulysses? And we can sit happily on our lovely babblies, watching people singing and talking and doing stuff. All I know I learned from telly, this big beautiful box of facts. You can tell from my big telly just how clever of a fella I am. Take it away, son. That from a stupid book. All I know I learned from telly. What to think and what to buy. I was pretty small already. But now I'm really, really small. Very, very small. Endless concepts, endless channels, endless chat on it, endless panels. All you need to fill your muffin without having to really think of nothing. Why would we waste the energy turning pages one, two, three? We can sit happily on a lovely babbleese, watch slightly famous people talking to really famous people. All I know, I learn from telly. This big beautiful box of facts. You can tell from my big telly just how clever of a fella I am. Who the Dickens is Charles Dickens? Mary Shelley? She sounds smelly. Charlotte Bronte? Do not want to. Jane Austen? In the composting. Ian McEwen? Ugh, I feel like spewing. James Joyce? Doesn't sound noise. William Shakespeare? William Shakespeare. Moby Dick? <laughs> Easy, Grandma. <laughs> all together now, all I know, I learned from Sally. The bigger the Sally, the smarter the man. You can tell from my big Sally what a very Clever fellow, I am. God, I'm smart. Hello, I'm Lavender, by the way, Matilda's best friend. 
and there's a bit coming up that's all about me. Well, not exactly about me, but I play a very big part in it. But I'm not going to tell you what it is because I don't want to spoil it for you. Okay, so basically what happens is I volunteer to get the trench with a jug of water. And on my way back, I... No, I don't want to say. On my way back, I find this thing. It's called a newt. A newt is basically this very large, ugly lizard and slimy that lives in water. So I pick it up and I... Oh, I'm going to put the newt in the trench with a jug of water and it's going to be brilliant! When I grow up, I will be tall enough to reach the branches that you need to reach to climb the trees you get to climb when you're grown up. And when I grow up, I will be smart enough to answer all the questions to know the answers to before you're grown up. And when I grow up, I will leave sweets every day on the way to work and I will go to bed late every night. And I will wake up when the sun comes up and I will watch cartoons until my eyes go square. When I grow up, when I grow up, when I grow up, I will be strong enough to carry on the heavy things you have to haul around with you when you're a grown up. And when I grow up, when I grow up, when I grow up, I will be brave enough to fight the creatures that you have to fight beneath the bed. He's trying to be a grown up. And when I grow up, I will eat sweets every day. On the way to work, that mums pretend that mums don't think are fun. And I will wake up when the sun comes up, and I will spend all day just lying in the sun. And I won't care, cause I'll be all grown up. When I grow up, I will be brave enough to fight the creatures that you need to fight beneath the bed each night to be a grown up. When I grow up, just because you find that life's not fair, it doesn't mean that you just have to grin and bear it if you always take it on the chin and wear it nothing will change when i grow and just because i find myself in this story it doesn't mean that everything was written for me if i think the ending is fixed already i might as well be saying i think that it's okay and that's not right Hi, Miss Phelps. Hello, Matilda. Are you enjoying school? Oh, yes. Bits of it, anyway. Miss Phelps, do you have a revenge section? A uh, revenge section? No, not a revenge section, per se. 
Why, is there a child at school behaving like a bully towards you? Oh no, not a child anyway. Matilda, are you sure there isn't anything you're not telling me? Do you want to hear the next part of the story? Story? Did you say story? What are we waiting for? Slowly, very slowly, the acrobat wound her shiny white scarf around her husband's neck. Good luck, my love, she said, kissing him with the gentlest of kisses. Smile, we have done this a thousand times before. Then, suddenly, she wrapped him in the biggest hug in the entire world. So big, he thought she would squeeze all of the air out of him. Then, they prepared to perform the most dangerous feat ever. The escapologist had to escape from the cage, lean out, catch his wife with one hand, and grab the fire extinguisher with the other, all within 12 seconds before the flames on the, on the acrobat's specially designed dress went up to the dynamite in her head and blew his wife's head off. <gasps> Sorry, continue. The trick started off well. The moment the specially designed dress went up in flames, the acrobat swung into the air. The crowd watched as he swung over the sharks and spiky objects. One second, two seconds, they held their breath as the flames kept up her dress. Three seconds, four seconds. She reached her arms out towards the cage. Five seconds, six seconds. Suddenly, the huge padlocks pinked open and the heavy chains fell away. Seven seconds, eight seconds. The escapologist flung the door open and reached his arm out, one huge, muscled arm out towards his wife and the child. Nine seconds, 10 seconds. I can't watch. 11 seconds. And as he grabs her hand, the flames are covered in foam before they can both be blown to pieces. Hooray, so a happy ending. No. No? No. Perhaps it was the nerves. Perhaps it was the thought of the child. But the escapologist used a touch too much foam and suddenly the hands became slippery and she fell. What happened? Is she okay? Did she survive? She broke every bone in her body, except for the ones at the end of her little fingers. She did manage to live long enough to have the child, but the effort was too great. Love our girl, she said. Love our little girl with all your heart. She's all we have ever wanted. And then, she died. <laughs> and then, things go worse. Worse? How could things have gotten worse? I'm afraid so. Because the escapologist was so kind, he never for one second suspected the acrobat sister for what happened. In fact, he asked her to move in with her and help look after their child. She was nothing but cruel to the little girl, making her wash, cook, iron, and clean, and beating her to the littlest of things wrong but always in secret, so the escapologist never found out. And so, the little girl grew up with the cruelest, meanest, horriblest aunt you could ever imagine. Let's call the police. <laughs> Miss Phelps, it's, it's just a story. Oh, right, of course. Oh, Matilda, your parents also think they won the lottery with having a daughter as clever as you. Oh yeah, they're always saying that in fact. They say, Matilda, we're so proud to have a daughter like you. You're like winning the lottery. Yeah, I'd better go. Flaming clever. What a very clever fella I am. Come here, you. Stop, stop. There's only one man I'll do that with. Well, gather around. I want to share my triumph with my family. Not you, boy. I'm a girl. 155 old bangers on my hands. All polished up, but the mileage on the clock telling the truth that these cars were knackered. 
How could I possibly make the mileage go down? I couldn't very well drive each car backwards, could I? Backwards. Well, then I had the most genius idea. I ran into the workshop, grabbed the drill, and using my incredible mind, I tasked it to the speedometer, the first car, and whacked it into reverse. Backwards. Yes, son, backwards, backwards. I drilled my turns thousands of times a second, and within a few minutes, I had to do the mileage of that old rust bucket to practically nothing. I did it to every single car backwards. Stop talking now, darling. There's a good boy. Ten minutes later, the Russians show up. Great, big, strong, scary, eight-faced people they were, wearing dark sunglasses and expensive suits. Don't know who they think they were. Russians are nocturnal. I saw that on a program last night. That was badges. That was a program about badges. Same thing. And did it work? I was fantastic, girl. Now I get a ball Rudolfo all day long. But, but you've cheated them. They've trusted you and you've just cheated them. What's the matter with you? What have we done to deserve a child like you? You know what I'm going to do tomorrow? I'm going to march down to a library of yours and tell that old hag you're never to be allowed in again. No, please don't. And if she does let you in, I'm going to have her fired. That should put a stop to your stupid books and all your reading. Now get in there and stay in there, you bookworm. You, you nasty little creep. That night, the escapologist's daughter cried herself to sleep in a room. She never told anyone about the evil aunt, as she didn't want to cause a fuss. And so, she suffered in silence. But this only pushed the aunt to greater cruelties. Until one day, she exploded. You are a You're useless, useless, filthy, nasty little creep! And she beat her threw into a dank, dark, dusty cellar, locked the door, and went out. But that night, the escapologist happened to come home early, and when he heard the sound of his daughter's tears, he smashed the door open. so wrapped up in the grief for my wife that I have forgotten the one thing that matters to us most. I love you so much, my daughter. I will spend the rest of my life making it up to you. We shall be together forever. Don't cry, Daddy. I'm all right. Daddy, please don't cry here. Let me wipe away your tears. Forgive me. Daddy, forgive me. I didn't mean 
to desert you I didn't want to upset you Please daddy don't cry I'll be alright With you by my side You have nothing to fear I'm here When the little girl finally fell asleep the escapologist's mind went to the acrobat's sister, and an almighty rage grew in his heart. This demon, this, this villain, this, this monster, she is selling the memory of my wife. She has betrayed the trust of her own sister. She has shown cruelty to the most precious realities of our marriage. Bullying children is her game, is it? Then let's see how she is when she's faced the wrath of a grown man. But that was the last little girl ever saw of her father, because he never came home, ever again. Tilda, I've got those books we spoke about if you'd like. What are you doing with those books, woman? They're, they're for Matilda. I know they are not, not on my watch. There is an age reading, there's an age for being a filthy little toad. These are toads, aren't you, Bob Trotter? Yes, Miss Trunchbull. Yes, Miss Trunchbull. Only Bob Trotter here is now a good toad. It has become clear to me, honey, that you have absolutely no idea what you are doing. You believe in happiness and fluffiness and books and stories. That is not teaching. To teach a child, you must first break the child. Quiet, you maggots! But no one was speaking, Miss Trunchbull. Please understand, Miss Honey, that when I say quiet, you maggots, you are entirely included in that statement. Where's the jug of water? Look at you! Fly me disgusting, revolting, revolting, I say! I say it's time we toughened you up with a little bit of fees air. <whistles> this school of late has started reeking. Quiet nuggets when I'm speaking! Reeking with the most disturbing scent. Only the finest nostrils smell it, but I know it oh too well. It is the odor of rebellion. It's the fruitcake of descent! And you may bet your britches this headmistress finds this foul odiferousness wholly or factorially insulting! And so to stop the stenches bread, I find a session of fees it. Sorts the milly rank from the revolting. The smell of rebellion comes out in the sweat, and his head will get you sweating. And it won't be long before I smell the pall of aiding and abetting. A bit of his head will tell us who was a head full of rebellious thoughts. Hurled, hurled, just like a rotten egg floats to the top of a bucket of water. The smell of rebellion, the stench of revolt, three, four, the reek of insubordination, I can take the whiff of resistance, one. the paw of the scent, the funk of mutiny in action. That's not bad. Right. Before weed becomes too big and greedy, you really need to nip it in the bud. But this isn't too. Before the worm starts to turn, you must scrape off the dirt and rip it from the mud. <coughs> A whiff of insurgence, the stench of intent, the reek of prepubescent protest, the pong of defiance, the odor of coop, the walk of anarchy in progress. Once we've exercised these demons, they shall be too poop for scheming. Some double time discipline should stop the rod from setting in. All right, let's have a time. Double time. 
One, two, three, four, discipline, discipline for children who are listening, who are minutes who are fidgeting or whispering in history, they're chattering and chittering, they're nattering and twittering, it's about with a smattering of discipline. We must begin insisting on rigidity and discipline, persistently resisting this and then kissing, missing minutes, minutes you are furthering, on pandering and tweeting. Well, long like this, they just need discipline. The simpering, the whimpering, the dribbling, and the spitzling, the mess and the identity with an issue we can fix. There is no mystery to mastering the auto classroom mission stick. It's discipline, discipline, discipline. The of rebellion, the stench of revolt, the freak of prepubescent plotting, the whip of resistance, the pong of dissent, the funk of moral fiber rotting. No children, close your eyes and just dream. Imagine, come on, try it. The peace and the quiet, a bubbling stream. <laughs> now imagine a woods with a cottage, and inside that cottage we find a dwarf called Seek. A carnival freak who can fold paper hats with his mind. And he says, don't let them steal your horses, no. Don't let them throw them away. If you find your way through, they'll be waiting for you. Singing. And then, just like I said, the stinky mandatory is his head. Even the squittiest, pittiest mess can harbor seeds of stickiness. Have you ever seen anything more repellent? Have you ever smelled out a thing worse than that smell of rebellion? The stench of revolt, the reek of insubordination, the whip of this is the pong of discipline, and I will not stop till you are squashed, till this rebellion is squashed, till glorious sweaty discipline has washed this sickening stench. You are wet, you are weak, you in fact are a snivelling nittle news? What is it? Ew, it's disgusting, it's a snake! You! What? You did this! Me, I did it, no! Stop! Miss Chunchbull! Miss Chunchbull, no, you'll pull her ears off! I discovered, Miss Honey, through many years of experimentation, that the ears of small girls do not in fact come off, they stretch. I can feel these ones stretching now! Oh, no, stop! Leave her alone, you big fat bully! <gasps> How dare you? You are not fit to be in the school, which would be the deepest, daggest, darkest prison. I shall be wheeled out structurally with the muzzle of your mouth. Oh, I shall crush you. I shall pow pound you. I shall dissect you, madam. I shall have you strapped to the table and perform little experiments on you. All these little sluts will sell off the most appalling dignities because of you, madam. Yes, you. Have you ever wondered, will I have a vow how when I say, say bread? For example, there's no way of knowing if red means the same thing in your head as red means in my head when someone says red. How if we are traveling at almost the speed of light, and we're holding a light, that light will still travel away from us. 
At the full speed of light, which seems right in a way But I'm trying to say, I'm not sure But I wonder if inside my head I'm not just a bit different from some of my friends These answers that come into my mind and fit in These stories delivered to me, fully written And when everyone shouts like they seem to like shouting The noise in my head is incredibly loud And I just wish they'd stop my dad and my mom And the telly in stories would stop just for once And I'm sorry I'm not quite Quite explaining it right But the noise becomes anger And the anger is light That is burning inside me Would usually fade But it isn't today For the heat and this shouting And my heart is pounding And my eyes are burning And suddenly everything, everything is Quiet should watch. Matilda, watch. Please. I moved it with my eyes. Am I strange? Um, how do you fancy a nice cup of tea? What do you, what do you think it is, this thing with my eyes? I can't say that I know Matilda, but I don't think it's something we should be afraid of. 
I'm sure it has something to do with that incredible mind of yours. So you mean, there's not enough room in my head for all my brains so that they have to squish out through my eyes or something? Well, yes, something like that. I met your mother. She's unusual. What about your father? Is he proud to have a daughter as brilliant <laughs> as you? Oh yes, he's, he's very proud. Very, very proud. He's always saying that, in fact. He says, Matilda was so proud to... That's not true, Miss Honey. That's not what he says at all. He calls me a liar and a cheat and a nasty little creep. I... I see. Here we are, home sweet home. Are you... Paul? Well, yes. I am, very. Don't they pay teachers very much? Well, they don't, but you see, I'm even poorer than most because of other reasons. You see, I used to live with my aunt, but one day I was walking in the woods and I came across this old little shed. So I begged to the farmer to let me move in. He thought I was mad, but he agreed. So I've lived here ever since. But, Miss Honey, you can't live in a shed. I'm not strong like you, Matilda. My father died when I was very young. Magnus was his name. He was very kind, but when he was gone, my aunt became my legal guardian, and she was mean and cruel like you can hardly imagine. And when I got my job as a teacher, she'd written everything down for taking care of me all these years. Every tea bag, every electricity bill, every tin of beans. And she'd made me sign a contract to promise to pay her back every penny. She'd even produced a document that said Magnus had given her his entire house. But do you really think he just did that? Magnus, I mean, do you really just think he gave her his house? I can't say that I know, Matilda, but years of living with that woman made me, well, pathetic. And that's why you live here. This roof keeps me dry when the rain falls. This door helps to keep the cold at bay. On this floor, I can stand on my own two feet. On this chair, I can write my lessons. On this pillow, I can dream my nights away. And this table, as you can see, well, it's perfect for tea. It isn't much. But it is enough for me. It isn't much, but it is enough. But, Miss Honey, she has everything that's yours. On these walls, I hang wonderful pictures. Through this window, I can watch the seasons change. By this lamp, I can read. And I, I am set free And when it's cold outside I feel no fear Even in the winter storms I am warmed by a small but stubborn fire And there is nowhere I would rather be It isn't much, but it is enough for me. For this is my house. This is my house. It isn't much, but it is enough for me. For this is my house. This is my I feel no fear, even in the fiercest storms, I am warmed by a small but stubborn fire, even when outside it's freezing, I don't pay much heed, I know that everything I need is in here.
It isn't much, but it is enough for me. It isn't much, but it is enough for me. Miss Honey, is this your father's scarf? Well, yes, it is. You see, my mother gave it to him. She's an, an acrobat. Well, yes. And my father's an, an escapologist. Matilda, how do you know that? So they were your parents? What? Who? The I... people in my story. What story? A story. I've been telling a story and I thought I'd been making it up, but it's real. It's your life. I've seen your life. You've seen my life. She did him in. Let's go to the police. No, Matilda, we can't. But we can just tell them. Tell them she did it. It'd be our word against hers. They never believed she was capable of murder. But why? She was so cruel to you. I mean, she beat you, threw you in cupboards, and locked you in cellars. Stop, Matilda, please. Miss Honey, your aunt's a murderer. Who is she? A contract is a contract is a contract. Miss Trenchable. In this world, children, there are two types of human beings, the winners and the losers. And I am a winner. I play by the rules and I win. And if I play by the rules and I do not win, then something is wrong. Something isn't working. And when something is wrong, you must put it right, even if it screams. What are you looking at? You! This class is going to have a very special spelling test. And any time you get any single question wrong, she'll go to choke you. You spell, hmm, let me see. Newt. Newt, N-E-W-T. Newt. What? Miss Honey Thomas, she's very good at teaching. Nonsense, Miss Honey's too soft and teaching to be good at anything anymore to see that. You, stand up, spell the one thing you all are. Revolting. R. E. V. O. L. T. I. N. G. Revolting. You're cheating! She's not cheating. She's simply spelling the word. These little special dolls cannot be this clever. I've taught them, that's all. With kindness and patience and respect. How dare you bring those words to my classroom? You know nothing of teaching. Now I shall prove it. You, flip box, not no spell. Amatopella areliosis. What? But that's not even a real word. So, I go to choke you. And I should warn you, it does have silent letters. K-L-C-H-E-L-L-A. Oh dear. Oh dearie, dearie, dear. <laughs> hey? Oh, I'm sorry. It was a silent Z. You're going to choke me! Cat. C-A-F cat. Oh, I, I got it wrong, miss. I guess I'll have to put me in Chucky too. What? Dog, D-Y-P, and me. Table, F-A-B-F-Y, and then... What are you doing? Banana, G-T-A-A-B-F. You can't put us all in Chucky. Stop, stop this. Maggot, D-S-P-A-T-Y-F, and me, miss. Snuff news, U-T-O-O-O-Q-Q-Q, -Q -Q, and me. No, what is this? What are you doing? Naughty. P U F T X Y N. Big fat bully. P Y T L F D R V S W. Revolting. P X Q Q Q A S T. One, two, three, four, eight, nine, X. Revolting. Oh. <laughs> you can't put us all in Chucky. You have to put me in Chucky too. Come now, maggots. You really think I hadn't thought of that? A whole array of chokies for each and every one of you. Now that the little spelling test is over, I can tell you that each and every single one of you has failed! You see, in this world, children, there are two types of human beings. The winners and the losers, and I... The chalk, look, the chalk is moving. It's writing something. What the devil is this? What? Agatha. No, wh wh what is this? Who's? This is Magnus. Who is doing this? Stop this right now. Stop it. Give my Jenny, Jenny back, back her house. house. No. It, it 
It can't be madness. It, it simply cannot be. No. Which one of you is doing this? Later, the acrobat and escapologist's daughter received a mysterious letter from a solicitor. It had said that her parents' will mysteriously turned up and she was now the owner of the big, beautiful old house, which up until that moment had been owned by the evil aunt, one Agatha Trunchbull. She moved in immediately and was happy, happier than she had been in her entire life. And do you know something else? The Trunchbull was never seen or heard from again, and all the turkeys were immediately destroyed. And a new headmistress took over. And her name was Miss Honey. And it was said to be the best school in all the land. And one other thing. Matilda was never again able to move things with her mind. She said it was because she no longer had a need for superpowers. But I thought it was because... And sometimes I would look at this little girl who had done so much to help others, but was stuck with parents who were mean and cruel to her, and it would just make my blood boil. And I would just wish that I could do something. So I guess this is the end. And I wish I could tell you that Matilda got the love she deserved. But I guess the truth is, not all stories have happy endings. Don't stop there, Goldman. We're going to Spain. <laughs> Spain, but why? 
because this idiot, this snit, this twit brain, decided it was a good idea to sell 155 old bangers to the Russian Mafia. I didn't know there was a flaming Russian Mafia, did I? Now come on, we're leaving forever, we're never coming back. Wait, let Matilda stay here with me. I beg your pardon? I would love to look after her, if she'd like to, that is. And I'd look after her with love and respect, and I'd pay for everything. You mean leave your daughter here with you? What, did you just call me? They'll be here any minute. You just call me your, your daughter? They're here, you idiots, I told you! Quick, behind the box. What if they damaged my legs, my beautiful legs? <laughs> love, we love you, Dolphin. Is my mic here? You are the woman's daughter? Yes. Where is your father? He's uh, <laughs> I don't know. The Mormon is a stupid man. And being stupid, he assumed I was stupid too. And that is a very stupid and rude thing to do. Oh yes, well, my father is quite rude and very, very stupid. You know this? At least there's one clever one in the family. What is your name, little girl? Matilda. I like you, Matilda. You seem smart. Sadly, in my line of work, I don't often get to meet smart people like you. Most of the people I deal with, their thinking is all backwards. Backwards? It does it the and she even covers her for the wrath of her father. Yes, it is a pleasure to meet such a child. Thank you, and it's a pleasure to meet you, too. Tigvaros Barovsky? You speak Russian? Well, not as well as I would like to, of course. It's a beautiful language, and I hope I can learn as much as I can. Matilda, who taught you how to speak Russian? Well, I taught myself. You see, I was reading Dostoevsky, and I thought it would be much better if I read it in its original language. I am Sergei. It is truly an honor to meet you, Matilda Wormwood. Matilda, your father has been stupid and rude to both of us, yes. I can very easily have one of my friends teach him some manners. And one day, when he leaves hospital, he will still be stupid, but not so rude, I think. I give this as a gift to you. What do you say? Mr. Sergei, that is a very tempting offer. But he's my father. I'm his daughter. I think... I've had enough revenge. This little girl, this miracle, Matilda. Da? 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 No, what are you doing? What are you doing? Matilda, you ask for Matilda. What is the matter with you guys today? Matilda, your father has been, is a very, very stupid man. But he is also very, 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 very lucky to have you as his daughter. Although, if I happen to be doing business here again, he will not be so lucky. Quick, let's go before they change their minds. But what about the girl? What is they here? With Miss Honey. Yes, yes, I do. And you, Miss Honey, you want to take care of her? Yes, I do. Well, we are running out of space, so. Yes, bye bye. Thank you. And Matilda leapt into Miss Honey's arms and hugged her. Miss Honey hugged her back. And they hardly noticed as the Wormwoods. Andrew Dolfo. And they hardly noticed as the Wormwoods and Rudolfo sped away into the distance. Because they had found each other. Yes, they had found each other.
class of 2023, I could not be more proud. I told you that theater is the most fleeting of art forms and that you need to shine and make memories on stage. You did just that. I am happy to say that the cast of Matilda will always be in our memory as one of the most outstanding productions at Buckley. I now think back to when you entered the art studio this September, all those months ago, at our show reveal party and learned what your musical was. There was an excitement, and some of you thought, why do we start now? Is it because a well-prepared actor is always successful? Yes, it is. It's a time for you to hone your theater skills, understand your character, and you had to learn how to speak with a British accent. You learned your lines, songs, and choreography, plus your class, are your own stage crew and tech team. During our final phase of productions, you watched it all come together. You realize that it does take an entire cast to make everything run smoothly. smoothly. Bravo, cast of Matilda. <laughs> now, I'd like to thank my production team, team as well. Mr. Richard Giordano, our music director. <laughs> Mr. Tom McKenna, Bruce Grossman, and Cultural Arts Playhouse for our lovely set pieces. Mrs. Stephanie Temple, my assistant in all things theatrical. We speak the same language. She is a master costume designer and prop specialist. Our soundboard team and new lightboard programmers and designers, Isabella Ramirez and Irene Lee. And you cannot forget the teacher that makes it all happen, Tony. Brandy and Bonnie, right there. Wait, Tony. <laughs> Senora Grania Vasquez, our beloved makeup artist for her wonderful artistry. <laughs> the maintenance team that is led by Rick Boy, the parents of the class of 2023, and thank you, Dr. Joelle, who is our biggest supporter of the arts. Wonderful show, class of 23. <laughs> We cannot celebrate before we congratulate uh, Mrs. D on a fabulous fabulous performance. Mrs. D, you are fantastic. You are amazing. You bring that talent to the announcement in this class of 2023. Congratulations. This was an amazing, amazing performance. As a matter of so good, Mrs. D, could we have an encore? What song could that be? We're going to do revolting. Revolting, of course. <laughs>